Welcome to Booking Through Life. I'm Mary. Thank you for uh, stopping by and chit-chatting with me today. Please feel free to leave comments in the comments section. I'm going to mention a few books. If you've read any of them, please let me know and let me know how your march is going. Um, so let's uh, let's talk books. This is going to be my March check-in number one. <laughs> Hopefully I'll have more than one. Last Last month, I tried to have uh, a check-in every week or so, and I only had one, and then I had my wrap-up. And I'm a little under the weather. You can kind of hear my voice, although my voice uh, lately has been changing quite a bit the last two years, so it's kind of hoarse anyway. Um, but I've had a little scratchy throat and a little uh, uh, cough. Not COVID, but just enough to kind of keep me, you know, not up to my normal standard. And, and having to stay home so I don't spread it around. So without further ado, let's chat books. So the first book I read um, was Welcome to the Ice Cube by Blair Bra Braverman. And I was really looking forward to this book. Um, it's set in Norway. She's an American and she goes and, and tries her hand at living in the north in Norway. And she also does a, a couple of years, um, at least in the winter, on a glacier in Juneau, Alaska, where she's um, with a, a sled dog tour and uh, mushing sled dogs. And uh, I really thought it was going to be about her adventures, uh, but it was not about her adventures. <laughs> Uh, it was more about, um, oh, it says here, let me read this first, chasing fear and finding home in the great white north. And so she isn't chasing her fear of being in the cold or being in a very remote place or being on this glacier or, or having these different adventures. It was um, a fear that she acquired or... I don't want to really say acquired. I don't really know how to say it delicately. So just before we go any further, I will say that this will have, this may trigger you. There is some triggering things in here um, and there will, will be a little bit of spoilers, but I don't want to really talk about this book too long. Um, so when she's probably around 15, she's in the 10th grade um, in the United States, she goes over to Norway as an exchange student. And the father of the host family is very intimidating to her. Um, she does not feel safe. And she he does some things that are inappropriate. Uh, and, and even like putting snow down her shirt and kind of um, touching in places he should not be touching. And she's she's young and she's not quite sure, like she's kind of wrestling with what, what, you know, is she imagining this? Is this really, you know, is this just like a cultural thing? Is this, so she's really um, not sure what to do. And um, yeah, so that's very unfortunate. And then, um, so she's left having this kind of, you know, as you would expect, not great feelings towards um, being in Norway, but she wants to go back. Um, and uh, it just, she just meets a lot of quirky people. And a lot of what she documents is how they, they respond to her um, um, in a sexualized way. And when she's in Alaska, she has a boyfriend and he, um, does some things I would categorize it one way she cat she does not call it that but um, yeah it's it's not a feel-good book it's not really about her adventures um, it's kind of about this wounding that she has this trauma that she has and how she goes about um, uh, healing from it I guess although yeah I I, I don't want to put any kind of um, it's her story, so I don't really want to have a, a judgment on it or anything, I, except to say that it just wasn't my type of a book. Um, I didn't enjoy reading it. I read far more than I probably wished I would have. I, I read almost to the end, and then I was just like, you know what, I'm, I'm done with this. So I really feel like if you're watching my channel, you probably 
this is probably not going to be your, a book for you. But maybe I'm wrong. So I DNF'd that book. Then <laughs> things looked up after that. So then I read um, my March, March Mystery Madness book, which is Airs and Graces by Reese Bowen. It's the seventh in her Royal Spinus series. And uh, I was really glad to get back into this. This may be my only mystery book for March. Um, although I have some things I may sh might shuffle around my TBR list, we'll just kind of see. I'm, I'm kind of going to let myself um, mood read a little bit more and not stick to my TBR. So in this book, we, we, are, we meet up with Georgiana again. She's 35th now in line to the throne because her brother had a baby in the last book. And um, this time, oh, before we get started on this actual story, there was one little funny line that I thought. So the book starts out, she's staying with her mom. And her mom's a little bit of a kind of a flaky woman, um, likes to have a lot of different love affairs. It's not really the mom type, but she wants, and she was an actress, <clears throat> and she wants to write her memoir. So um, Georgie is trying to type for her. And so she says, uh, Mummy was full of enthusiasm. She bought me a sturdy Underwood typewriter. Um, and I had made some progress at mastering it, reaching a typing speed of several words per minute without getting my fingers trapped in the keys. <laughs> so I just thought that was funny. She's happy at just several words per minute <laughs> and not getting stuck in the keys. Anyway, I just read that. I thought it was funny. Um, so then the mom kind of decides that her life is too scandalous and she doesn't want to say all those things. So she ends up going back to her... Um, not her husband, but the man that she's kind of um, living with, and uh, some German guy. And then the queen, um, the Queen Mary, Queen Mary, who is Georgiana's cousin, asks her to come over because Georgiana has done some favors for the queen before. The queen has one of her favorite friends, a longtime friend who is the Duchess of Ensford, and her name is Edwina. And Edwina, um, her husband has died, and now her oldest son is now the Duke of Ensford, Cedric. And he has no intention of marrying. He does not have an heir. And so she's worried about what's going to happen to their dukedom and to their their property. And this is very much an important thing to her. So um, they have discovered that there may be an heir in Australia. Her youngest son had gone to Australia and then um, the war happened, and so he, he enlisted in the war, and he died. And, and unbeknownst to the family, he had gotten married, and he had this son. And they find out about this son. His name is Jack. And so they send for him, and then they want Georgiana to come, because he's young and Georgiana's young. They want her to kind of come alongside of him and teach him and groom him in the ways of the gentry and how, how a duke would act rather than a sheep herder from the outback. And so he's kind of shell-shocked and uh, not quite sure what he's gotten himself into. And lo and behold, the Duke ends up uh, with, the, with Jack's knife in his back. <laughs> so, and nobody really likes the Duke. So who did it? <laughs> I will have to say that um, she kept me guessing on this one. I've kind of guessed on the other ones. She she gave enough of a hint that you could figure out who the murderer was. This one here, I didn't guess. So it was quite a surprise. It was quite a surprise who the murderer was. And um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. It was a good book. So my March Mystery Madness is um, a, a hit, <laughs> even if that's the only book I read. Now, the next book I finished, I started in, um, in January, and I was buddy reading it with my mom, and we were reading about three chapters at a time, and then we were talking and discussing it, and we finished it yesterday, we talked about it this morning, and we just, we absolutely loved it. I think Jane Eyre may be my favorite heroine now. Um, she is just perfection. Uh, she's, um, she's an angel, or she's divine. I just think that uh, the way she love, loves uh, Rochester is just 
it's yeah it's otherworldly it's just absolute perfection and i yeah i just the whole thing was just really good and the one thing i we were kind of grumping about was the very end and how she um um jane Eyre gives um a very nice um tribute to uh, saint john who my mom and i did not like him at all and we thought jane was way too gracious with her uh with her ending of him but i i may do a, a big uh, just a video on just Jane Eyre and I may have it out for Victober or I may just have it out um, um, sooner than that but I really want to get my thoughts together and uh, plan it all out so it's a little more cohesive than some of my videos are where I just kind of ramble <laughs> anyway it was because it was just so good so those are the books that I finished for this month and then I started I was like, what book am I going to read? I really thought that this would be the perfect book to read after Jane Eyre, and it's turning out I was correct. And that's Katie Lumsden's uh, The Secret of Hartwood Hall. I'm on chapter seven, and it's just, uh, oh my gosh, it's, it's just, it's a page turner. It just, right away, I just immediately um, just, got right into her her storyline. I immediately love the characters. Uh, they feel very real to me. Um, lately, I've, it's been taking me about 100 pages before I've, I've really um, connected in with the story, but this drew me right in. And so I'm going to read you. So it's even, there's, even before the story starts, there's just the, the narrator um, does a little, um, um, kind of thinking back about Hartwood Hall. And so I'm just going to read you that first little couple of lines. It's just the first sentence. When I think of Hartwood Hall, there are moments that come back to me again and again, moments that stain me, that cling like ink to my skin. <laughs> oh, it's a little gothic. It's a little Jane Eyre-ish. It kind of had a little bit of Jamaica in feels to me, and I just read that one. Uh, so it's right where I'm at right now. And I love it because one of the things that I, I'm really liking about it is her chapters are quite short. So you can really just, you know, oh, I've only got 10 minutes or I've only got five minutes. I can squeeze in a chapter. <laughs> Uh, but they're really, really good. The characters are, are ri really rich so far. And she really keeps you guessing, even now, on like what's going on with um, the main character. Um, I just forgot her name. How did I do that? Uh, Mrs. No, Mrs. Lennox. Um, how did I just forget her name? But anyway, um, yeah, there's, there's a little bit of a mystery going on with her, what happened between her and her husband. And yeah, it just, I think it's going to be a good one. I think it just might be my, well, Jane Eyre was five stars. So I think it might be my second five star for, for the year. So yay. Anyway, let me know what you're reading, how your March is going. That's it for me for right now. I'm looking forward to what else is going to um, come up on my, my TBR and my uh, my reading for this month. I'm really excited about it. And that's about it. So I hope your all your books are good books. Oh, I might even do something um, on location soon because you know what? Last week it snowed. This week we have like spring flowers everywhere. One of, one of our mountains that is known for the wildflowers is in full bloom. So I might want to get out there and show you how kind of crazy it can be here in, in Arizona. Anyway, until then, I will talk to you later. Bye!